Hey, Pigware19 here, and uh, it's been a while since I've said I was going to do this video, but um, here are my top 10 movies of 2012. Yeah, 2012. Man, I thought it was 2014 for a second. I'm dumbass. <coughs> Alright, coming in at number 10. Now, a lot of people are probably going to give me shit for this, but don't give a fuck. That's my boy. Now, a lot of people diss this. or like, oh, Adam Sandler. I love Adam Sandler. And after I saw run-ups in the trailer for Jack and Jill, I lost hope of Adam Sandler. Then I saw the trailer for That's My Boy, and I'm like, hold up. He might be doing good. And it started off a little, mm, the voice, irritating. Then as the film progressed, the jokes got funnier, m more, and then had genuine moments, like heartfelt moments, and I liked that. <sighs> and it gives me hope for Adam Sandler, and after he makes Grown Ups 2, which I'm really disappointed that they're making sequels to that shit, Mom. Hopefully you do good movies again. Coming up number 9 is another comedy called The Watch. Now, The Watch has a great cast, and hold on, I got the DVD right here. <laughs> right here. I mean, we got fucking Ben Stiller, Vince Vaughn, Jonah Hill, this black guy right here, with a British accent, that's fucking awesome. That was just, <laughs> it's a hilarious movie. And the action sequences are direct, did really, really well. And it's written by Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, and some other guy. And Seth Rogen, if you guys don't know, he is my hero. He is why I want to write comedies, basically. I was thinking of just sticking horror then. I just saw Super Bad and Pineapple Express. I'm like, you know what? I want to write comedies because of this guy. And also, he's just awesome. Coming in a nerd, eight is Lincoln. Now, Lincoln was a good movie. Really great acting, and he kept me invested in the film. But it's not a movie I'll probably go back and watch over and over again. It's a movie I might run and show my mom or another loved one or a friend. Hey, check out this. It's a really well acted movie. But Daniel Day Lewis became Lincoln. Like, he like got so invested in the role. He was like Robert Downey Jr.'s character in Tropic Thunder. He didn't break character too, he did DVD commentary. <laughs> So, Lincoln, really good. Number seven is 21 Jump Street. 21 Jump Street, I love Jonah Hill, and Skinny Jonah Hill is for his first skinny movie. So I'm like, hmm, is he going to solve this in comedy? Because Jonah Hill, when he was big, he had a lot of the physical comedy, and it can't really work with a skinny person. But seeing that, I was surprised. He did really, really good, and Jane Tatum... I'm like, ah, oh, the dude from Step Up, uh, I want to see that guy, and he had me laughing. And it was probably one of the funniest films of the year, but not as funny as number six, and that is Ted. Now, Ted, I loved Ted. Everything about it, I mean, the jokes, the story, the actors. And so the creator family guy, so, you know, it's going to be side-splitting hilarious and ridiculous. But that's why I liked it. It knew it was ridiculous and it didn't take itself too seriously. And also, another heartwarming comedy. Number five is a movie that scared the absolute shit out of me, and that is Sinister. Now, there's not a lot of good horror movies out anymore, but Sinister, it got to me. I was lying in bed that night and I'm like, fuck, I have to turn the lights on. If you've seen my review, you know how scared I was. <laughs> Coming in at number four is my favorite comedy of the year. And. I'm kidding, that was really terrible. I'm not that good at comedy sometimes. Uh, American Reunion. Now, I love American Reunion because I love the American Pie films. The spin off films, not so much. But American Pie 1. American Pie 2 and American Wedding. And the reason why I was really excited for American Reunion because American Wedding, I liked it, but 
We didn't have Oz or Heather. And I'm just like, you know, I just don't feel like that's a really good ending. And American Reunion totally met my expectations. It went higher than my expectations. And I love Stifler, so. He's, he was my, like, my idol in middle school. Like, I thought I was Stifler. Except without getting laid a lot and stuff. Number, coming in number three is one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen. And that's The Avengers. I've seen The Avengers so many times. And it's a great movie. I mean, it's The Avengers. Enough said. And coming in number two... It was really hard for me to pick two and one, but number two is a. Uh, hold on one sec. Shit, crap sandwich. There we go. Is this movie right here, The Dark Knight Rises? And I got the collector's edition, and this is good. It was a great conclusion to the series. Christopher Nolan, I mean, he cannot do wrong. I believe. Christopher Nolan is the god of film. He is literally the god of film. Like, God made him and said, you know what? This is going to be the god of film. There's a god of thunder, there's a god of war, and there's a god of film. Christopher Nolan. Yeah. And number one, it's a late movie, and but still, in 2012, was Django Unchained. Now this worked really well just because it, this the acting was great, the story was great, it kept you entertained, everything about it was good. There's like no flaws. The Dark Knight Rises had some flaws. Django Unchained, no flaws at all. So that's my uh, top 10 movies of 2012 and I'd like to know what's your guys' top 10. Leave it in below and if you don't know 10 just do 5. Or three. Or one. <laughs> I don't really give a shit. Just put something, you know? Talk to me. Until next time, I'm Ed Giltonan, the world's shittiest, most amateur movie critic.